welcome back. And I must say, the highlight of that film was the unmasking of the disfigured queen. Other than that, it was basically a show featuring beautiful women with very little emphasis on sci-fi. As far as the acting, I say it was only so-so. So on the rule scale, where first magnitude's best, tenth magnitude worst, the queen of outer space from 1958 garners only a so-so 6.25 rating. Yes. Now for that trivia question regarding Zsa, Zsa again. How many husbands did she have? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten? And you say seven? No, it was nine. By the way, she said the only man she truly loved was her third husband, actor George Saunders, who won Best Supporting Actor for the film All About Eve and perhaps starred in his best film, The Death of a Scoundrel, which also featured Zsa Zsa Gabor. Interestingly, they were only married for five years, 1949 to 1954. In 1972, George Saunders, at the age of 65, committed suicide. He left a suicide note saying that he was bored with life. How about that? Now, is it at all possible that life could exist on the red-hot planet Venus? I should point out that the surface temperature is 900 degrees Fahrenheit, enough to melt lead, and the surface pressure 90 times that on the surface of Earth. But I maintain that life could exist, first of all, in the Venusian atmosphere. Indeed, even terrestrial scientists have agreed that might be a possibility because we have bacteria that do float around in clouds in the terrestrial atmosphere. Now, that Venusian atmosphere is consisting of most, mostly carbon dioxide with sulfuric acid clouds. But life could, I believe, exist in the air because we're talking about any number of temperature pressure combinations, including those that could even be compatible for humanoid life as you ascend into the atmosphere. So I'm stressing that there could be three possible types of entities in this Venusian sea. First of all, planktonic forms, which just are swept along in the atmosphere by the powerful Venusian currents. Secondly, you'd have nustonic forms, which adhere to clouds and are carried about by them. And the third form would be more advanced nectonic forms, which might have volitional motion and even intelligence. And what about the surface of the planet? We have counterexample after counterexample on Earth where entities can thrive in hot temperatures and under high pressures. For example, off the coast of Washington, we have five-foot-long red-headed tube worms which are existing near volcanic vents at 600 degrees Fahrenheit and eating po poisonous sulfuric acid. And in the Sahara Desert, we have so-called silver ants which come out at the height of noon when the temperature reaches 135 degrees Fahrenheit. That's when all other entities, including desert lizards, seek shelter from the heat. But these silver ants are foraging for food at that time. Not quite as high as the temperature on Venus, but it indicates that life could exist at higher temperatures than what humans are normally exposed to. And I point out as far as pressure goes, we have entities that are existing at 35,000 feet below the ocean, ocean surface, where the pressure is actually 12 times that on Venus. So with these counterexamples, I argued that some forms of life could actually have evolved to live on the surface of Venus, not just in the atmosphere. Now, I'm not talking about necessarily humanoid, English-speaking entities, but some form of life that could even evolve intelligence in time. Indeed, my overall thesis is that the universe is literally teeming with life that life indeed is the common, yes, I said the common denominator of the cosmic backdrop, and that every planet, no matter how inhospitable it appears to be, may harbor an entire spectrum of life ranging from lower to higher embodiments. Now, with regard to Venus, no, I don't think we're going to find beautiful Venusian females there, but other types of intriguing life may well exist on that red-hot planet, yes. Now, let's take a look in the Vault of Strange Deaths. We have an entry here. It says, chickens are for eating. Yes. Now, first of all, we have a case in Kern County of a man who just retrieved his fighting rooster from the ring. And you know what that rooster did? It cut him on the leg because it had a blade attached to its leg. And within two hours, he had bled to death. And just two weeks earlier in India, another man with a fighting rooster brought him out 
and the rooster had razor blades attached to its legs and slashed his throat and he bled to death. That's why I say chickens are for eating. Yes. Now, until next time, may the power of the cosmos be with you. Yes. 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 And again I say, life can exist on Venus.